Hi everyone, in this lab, you're going to be working with the dynamic list that we have been developing in class this week. Now the dynamic list is a clone basically of Java's array list. And we've done a lot of the methods that would be included with array list. We've done adding to the end of the list or in the middle somewhere in the list. We've done removing, we've done searching, we've done expanding the list automatically when it gets to be full. And that covers like 90%, like I think I said, of the usage of an array list. In this lab, you're going to be working with that class to sort of make sure that you understand the ideas and concepts that are going on. And you're going to write three new methods that are part of the real array list, but aren't currently part of our dynamic list. So writing these three methods will improve our dynamic list and make sure that you understand it and give you some practice in working with arrays and generic types and things like that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the things you need to do. All right, so like I said, we're going to be working with the dynamic list class that we worked on in class this week. You're gonna be adding three new methods onto this dynamic list class. So you'll start with that, start by downloading dynamiclist.java, and that's gonna be your starting point. Then you're going to add three new methods to it. Each of these will be sort of similar to one we already have, which will just kind of make sure that you understand what's going on with the code. So the first one is called set, and this lets you change a slot in the array list from one value to another value. So the first parameter is the index of the one you wanna change, and then the second parameter is the item that you wanna set it to. So for instance, if you pass in two for index and Bob for item, it will, go to slot two of the array list and change that array slot to be equal to Bob. In this method, you should make sure that you throw the index out of bounds exception if the index that was given is not valid. Next, you'll work on a method called last index of, which is gonna be similar to the index of method. They're both for searching through the dynamic list. Index of searches starting at the beginning and it finds the first occurrence of the item you give it whereas last index of starts at the end of the array and it gives you the last index of the item where it occurs. If it's not found, it should return negative one. And then lastly, and perhaps the most difficult of these is trim to size. And what this method is meant to do is to make sure that the dynamic list isn't using any extra space. So we talked about the difference between the capacity of the list and the size of the list. So for instance, when you make the dynamic list with the default constructor, it sets the size to 10. And you might add a few items. Let's say you add four items. Then if you call trim to size, what it's going to do is it's going to trim it down so that the capacity is equal to the size and it can only store the four items that it's been given. This method would be helpful if, for instance, you don't know how big your list needs to be and you just add a whole bunch of items, but then you wanna make sure after that point, you're not wasting any space. So you call trim to size so that there's no empty cells off of the end of the list. Now, all three of these methods are actually part of the real array list class, and you can read their documentation on the Java docs. They'll just serve to make our dynamic list a little bit closer to the real array list. Now to test this, you can use the following main class, which I've given you called dynamic list test. It makes a dynamic list of strings, adds a bunch of strings to it. Then it does some testing, like it sets name one to Billy instead of Bob. So when you go ahead and print this here, instead of printing Bob, it should print Billy because we've set it. That's to test the first one. Then we have a test for the index out of bounds exception. So if we pass an in index 100 right here, that should cause this exception to be thrown and it shouldn't actually do anything else. Next, it tests the last index of method. So it searches for the last index of Claire, which you can see there's one Claire here, but there's another Claire down here. So it should give you the index of the last one. Then we call trim to size. And this should do, like I said, it should remove any empty space at the end of the array list. And to test this, you should put inside of your trim to size method you should print the size and the capacity after doing the resize. So the size is gonna be your size variable inside of that class, whereas the capacity is the array.length. So if we look at the code real quick, this is the size of the array list, how many items are actually stored in here that we put here, whereas data.length is going to be the capacity. So essentially you're resizing 
the array list for trim to size, except instead of making it bigger, you're going to be making it smaller. Hopefully that one makes sense. Then it prints out the final list at the end. So your output for this lab should look like this. Billy, then the exceptions thrown correctly. The last index of Claire should be nine. Then the size and capacity should both be 11. And this will be even though we added all these items and uh, made the initial capacity be 30. So it should resize the capacity down to 11, which is just barely big enough. So when you're done with this, you can send me the .java file for your updated dynamic list class to me at my email address. You don't need to send me this test class, uh, of course, because you know I already have that. So, all right, if you have any questions on the lab, like usual, be sure to let me know. Thanks.